So you have an LS powered car and you're like, dude, I found a, an LSA supercharger for a pretty decent price. And I'm kind of wondering what it would take to put it on my LS powered vehicle. And it's really quite simple. So in this video, I'm just, it's gonna be quite a bit of talking, but we're gonna kind of go through some of the um, parts that you would need for certain um, engines, cylinder heads, and whatnot. So here we go. All right, so obviously the first thing that you're probably gonna notice is if you have a generic, you know, 5.7, a 4.8, a six liter, or in this case, you have a 5.7, you are probably wondering, well, how do I go from a cathedral port style cylinder head to a square port supercharger? And there's a couple really quick ways to do that. The best way, if you have cathedral, some adapters. They're really prevalent. Dirty Dingo sells this aluminum set. And then they just, what's nice about these is they have, you know, seals. Majority of them do. They have seals that, you know, boop, boop. That's it. Done. Now you have a square port opening that'll line up perfectly with the blower. Um, it does space the blower up. But other than that, these work flawlessly. And actually, this motor right here was the same motor we had in the WRX. And these are the same plates we had on at first. Now, we did switch to Olsen Works, um, like a thermal adapter. That's the same deal. It's, uh, you know, cathedral port to square port. Um, and yes, so this is kind of what you would need to adapt the supercharger to any generic 5.3 or 4.8 liter. Other than that, there should be no clearance issues um, within regards to that. If you're running the supercharger, you obviously can't run a crossover like this. You have to have the plugs in the back and then you just have the front crossover. Um, and some of you know the trucks came with those. Um, if you don't have that, you can go on eBay and just buy like, you know, a cheap, you know, steam kit or whatever, and then you're set. The other thing is getting like the belt situation sorted. So on the truck here, um, we have um, kind of a few basic things um, to bolt this blower up to. This is a 4.8. Uh, it has the stock 862 heads. I didn't even break into this thing at all. It's literally stock head gaskets, head bolts, all that. You need the adapter. So on this one, I'm running the Philonic Spacers from Olsen Raceworks. Um, and then I kind of built my own uh, drive system. Um, so we're just running a stock lower pulley, the truck pulley. This is an Atomic Fab HD tensioner bracket. Um, the reason I went with this is because I wanted to have a pulley or a tensioner that could apply enough tension to the belt and kind of save money. So the entire goal with doing this belt drive system was to save money. So I think in this part right here, I think I probably have 160 bucks in the bracket and a new tensioner with the belt, another like 50 or something like that from O'Reilly's. And then I just bought a generic um, accessory drive kit for a truck that puts the alternator off. It leaves the power steering pump in the stock location and moves the alternator over. Now they're not made for this, but it does work really well. All I did was right here, there's a section where I drilled three bolt holes to put this idler so then I could get my belt to come up around here and go to the supercharger. And that's it. I think I spent 50 bucks on that alternator bracket. Again. So all together for my belt drive system, I've got what? 250 bucks. And that's it. And uh, it fits really well. Keeps the power steering pump in the stock location and simply pushes the alternator over. So other than that, to get this blower on the truck, physically mounted to it, not that big of a deal. Um, the other side of this, when you're swapping one of these blowers over, is obviously wiring. You're concerned, how do I wire um, in injectors, and how does that all work? Theoretically, the blower doesn't need any wiring um, to work, technically. It's a mechanical piece. It bolts on, plain and simple. The only thing is the map sensor, and your injectors. So I went from the original, I don't even know what the kind of um, injector clips they're called, but we switched over to 
the EV6 style plugs. And so that was just cutting the wires and splicing in, you know, the new uh, pigtails there. But other than that, that's it. Uh, wired in this three bar map and they actually sell adapter harnesses for this to go to this old style three bar map. And uh, then I just ran this adapter to Barb and that's it, literally. Uh, the fuel system on this truck is in stock. It's obviously, you know, I got a regulator and put a dedicated fuel pump relay and stuff. But other than that, that's it. Aside from literally an adapter harness for a three bar mat, and then splicing in some new pigtails for your injectors, that's all that you really need to electrical, like ECU wise, brain control wise, that's it. That's all you need to control this. Um, I'm not running a map on this setup. I'm deleting that. Um, just because I don't want to have to worry about it. And there's really not a good straight path where air can pass through the math. So that's it. Um, to do a blower swap on an LS is pretty straightforward. If you're watching this video, you've probably either acquired a blower or you found one for a good price and you're trying to see about where you're going to land when you're done. So I just bought a generic eBay um, fuel cell. Literally, a 2.5 gallon fuel cell, that's it. Um, welded on an additional bung and a vent here so that there's no vacuum suction being created inside here. Uh, just a generic water pump off eBay, and then like that's it, a heat exchanger cheap, $50 heat exchanger off eBay. Really just down and dirty, plain and simple. And it gets the job done. Um, the other thing you may be wondering, is throttle control. Now you can wire in a drive-by-wire throttle body and that's fine, you can do that. But if you wanna keep your drive-by cable, what you'll need is a Motion Raceworks throttle body bracket, or if you can weld, weld one up yourself, that's fine too. The only reason I had to cut this back here is because this rail is from a, I believe it's from an LS9. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it is because the outlet goes that way. And on the CTSV or the ZL1 rails, they sit like this. And so that allows for the bracket to go back and bolt back here. So depending on which fuel rail you get, regardless, you can use this bracket, you bolt it in, and then all you have to do is find yourself a 98 to 2002 Firebird or Camaro with a V8 and grab the throttle cable. It has to be one that doesn't have traction control, just a throttle cable that comes from the firewall directly to the throttle body. And that will literally drop in your truck. It plugs right into the stock hole in the firewall. It clips right into your pedal and is long enough to route it back around and come down to your throttle body. So other than that stuff, that is about it. That's about the basics to get a blower dropped onto your, you know, 98 plus uh, Tahoe, Yukon, Suburban, whatever, your Silverados, your Sierra, pretty much anything that has a cathedral port or even a square port LS, you can drop these blowers on. The belt drives are fairly simple. Um, you know, the I think a lot of people get concerned with the belt stuff and just keep it really simple. The stock pulley does fit and work with the stock upper pulley. Um, you use the center ribs there and then you figure out, you know, your tensioner situation. You figure out your alternator power steering. And what I did was I took an old longer belt that I had and I cut it directly in half and I looped it around and then clamped it right in the middle with the vice grip and took a measurement and then went up and grabbed a belt and uh, got that figured out. So I figured I'd do a short little video kind of discussing the LSA on an LS, kind of what's involved. Um, if you're running a Terminator, you know, or a, a dedicated standalone ECU, it's going to be different. But the main gist of the matter is mechanically these blowers, they bolt right on. Cathedral port, you need spacers or adapters that adapt from the cathedral ports on the heads to the square ports on the supercharger. If you have square port heads, they literally bolt right on. There is one thing on these superchargers, there is a dowel on the passenger side of the blower. And on the LSAs, they line up with a port that's kind of drilled or machined into the cylinder head. You just take a nice hardened chisel and you literally hammer that thing off. Like just, just hammer it off. It'll break. It'll literally shatter and break. 
you take an angle grinder, whatever, clean it up, whatever sharp edges are left, if there's any, and you're good, like that's it. It's not, don't make it more than what it is. That dowel just needs to be removed for the blower to sit flush and it sits on this side of the blower here. Hopefully this video has been a little informative as to how to get an LSA bolted onto your LS engine. Now, regardless if it's a six liter with square port heads or it's a four, eight, five, three, or five, seven, six liter with cathedral port heads, it's not too difficult. It's quite straightforward, um, like I stated in the video. So I hope you guys like this video. Like, share, subscribe, comment, and then put down in the comments um, any feedback, anything like that, because without that, I legitimately have no idea what you're thinking. Um, this was a video I figured I'd put out uh, simply because on like Facebook pages and stuff, a bunch of questions get asked, and I figured I'd make a video just kind of talking about how simple it is to put one of these superchargers on your LS powered vehicle. So hope you guys stay safe. Hope you had a great weekend and uh, keep on keeping on.